The Amazing Mr. Malone. Uh, Operator. Operator, get me the office of John J. Malone. The National Broadcasting Company presents The Amazing Mr. Malone, an exciting half hour of mystery starring George Petrie as the lawyer whose practice before every type of bar has become a legend. Our locale is the city of Chicago, the time, the present, and the hero of these weekly adventures, The Amazing Mr. Malone. Malone's the name. John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. You know, it's often said that no visit to Chicago is complete without taking in the Field Museum, the stockyards, and yours truly. And as you probably guessed, I'm the one who often says it. My hobby is collecting cliches. Tonight I'd like to trot out for your inspection the little number that goes, a strong offense is the best defense. As a case in point... I give you Steve Kemper. Mr. Kemper is the stockier of the two gentlemen getting out of the elevator on the fourth floor of the Belvedere. He owns the Banger Club, the lushest gambling joint this side of Vegas. And if you're wondering why Steve keeps patting his right-hand coat pocket as he marches along, that's because he's carrying his life insurance there. But obviously, his associate, Curly Michaels, doesn't approve of that policy. I don't like it, Steve. I don't like it one bit. Then maybe you better wait downstairs, Curly. Oh, look, Steve, I didn't mean it that way. Well, I did. And suppose friend Willard gets tough. I only hope he does. Okay, I'll be down in the lawn. No, you better make it in the car. I may want to leave real fast. I got you. Who is it? Room service. Just a second. Hello, Willard. Wait a minute. I'm even willing to wait, too, but suppose I do it inside. Who the devil are you? Kemper's the name. Steve Kemper. Oh. I take it you've heard of me. Who hasn't? I was in your joint a couple of weeks ago. It's a nice layout you got there. My daughter isn't bad, either. Hmm? Vicky. I don't follow you, Kemper. No. You didn't waste any time following her. Maybe the shoe's on the other foot. Maybe she's the one who did the chasing. You take that back. Easy, you... fella. You're going to stay away from Vicky, do you understand? Don't you think you're being a little melodramatic? That type of father went out with East Lynn. I'm warning you, Willard. You're warning me. Did it ever occur to you I might be in love with Vicky? Oh, don't make me laugh. What about your wife? Vicky knows all about Marcia. Does she know all about your other women? Francis Carson, Paula Lewis, Nora Stone? Shall I go on? You've been doing some research. Uh-huh. Look, Kemper, I know I'm no bargain. But neither is your daughter. What did you say? Did you ever do any checking there? Would have paid you. We're two of a kind, right out of the same deck. Maybe that's why she's got it for me. Oh, you dirty... No, you... Get to that gun, let go of it. Drop it. I'll kill you. Come on, Steve. Oh, you old goat. Oh. Come on, now, drop it. Yeah. Only allow one chance for a customer. Uh. You want to play rough, huh? Well, two can play like that. Uh. And I got a hunch I'm a lot better at this game than you. Uh. Telling you, Steve, you should have stopped off first to see a doctor before I brought you home. I said no, Curly. Keys are in my side pocket. Yeah, I got them. It's a small one. Someone would think I was never here before. Who is it? Only me, Vicky. Me and Curly. Help me in the bedroom fast. I don't want to. Uh oh, too late. Well, aren't you a lovely sight? I had an accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all my fault, Vicky. You see, this car was coming don't and I. Don't bother lying, Curly. I just finished talking to Willard. And you know. Yes, indeed I know. I'm only sorry he didn't kill you. Vicky. I mean it. Oh, now, honey, that's no way to talk. Your old man you is... Shut Look, up. baby, whatever I tried to do... Whatever you tried to do. Why can't you mind your own business? Well, if you knew what he said about you. And every word was true. Vicky. Every single word. And you know why? Because you've always spied on me. Because you never let me do anything I wanted. No, that's because it's... Go on. Go on, say it. It's because you were afraid I might take after my mother. Well, I don't blame her for running off. That's enough out of you. I can imagine what it must have been like being married to you. Always watching, always spying. That's not true. I don't know how she stood it as long as she did. Well, I've had my fill, too. I'm going to live my own. Vicky, where are you going? Vicky, come back. Maybe I haven't handled it right, but whatever I do... Vicky! <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, I'm coming. Hello, Malone. Do I know you? I think so. Well, the voice is familiar, but I can't place the face. What happened to your old one? That's not funny, Malone. Well, my writer goes to bed at three. Can I come in? Look, Steve, you know my office is in the Prescott building. Sure, but you're never there. Why didn't I think of that? Sit down. Thanks. You want a drink? You look like you could stand one. No, I'll pass, but don't let that stop you. It never does. I'll come right to the point, Malone. For my money, you're the best lawyer in Chicago. Never mind the con, Steve. What's on your mind? Vicky is running around with a wrong old party named Willard Grant. I tried to break it up tonight. By putting your face in his fist? Yeah. Obviously, it didn't work. No. What do I do now? Well, legally, you can't do a thing. You can't force a man out of town because you don't like the way he parts his hair. But there's nothing to prevent you from arriving at an agreement that'll affect the same thing. What do you mean? Buy him off. Suppose you went to this Willard and laid it on the line. Now, if I were him, I guess... Well, why don't you? You get him to agree to leave Vicky alone, I'll pay whatever fee you think is fair. Look, Steve, I hate like the devil to tell you this, but your little Vicky... Suppose we leave her out of this. You take care of Willard, I'll take care of you. How much can I offer him? Ten grand. You don't care how you spend my money. What? It's just a bad joke. I figure I left most of that dough at your place trying to make a seven the hard way with two three and a half. Okay, Steve, make out your check. I'll do what I can. beg your pardon. What for? You haven't done anything. Not yet. But I'm afraid I made a mistake. The desk clerk told me this was Willard Grant's room. Well, he must have known what he was talking about. Well, if you're the hotel chambermaid, I'm moving here myself. You'd be wasting your time on staying at the Stockton, Mr. Malone. John J. Malone. Not the amazing. Ain't it awful? Well, this is a pleasure, Mr. Malone. I can't tell hey, you how much... what's going on here? You've got company, Willard. I thought you were going, Marcia. I was on my way, darling, when I ran into this gentleman... It's been real charming, Miss Malone. Let's do it again sometime. You said the Stockton? I said the Stockton. And the name? Marsha Grant. Oh. Then you're his wife. Yes. Yeah. But don't let that stop. Hmm. Lovely girl. I'm glad you approve. you someone would think you two don't get along. Would they? If they judge by appearances. I think you'll gather my name is Malone. So? so I'm a lawyer, Willard. I represent Steve Kemper. Get out. At first, I'd like to show you something. Well... Aren't you impressed? One-way ticket to L.A. on the super cheap and a check for $10,000. You know what you can do with it. Don't be a sap, friend. That's as high as Steve will go. You won't get any more through Vicky. How would you like a punch in the nose? How's that? What's the matter? Don't you think I can? Let me feel your muscle. Look, Malone. Yeah, I guess you could. Okay, Willard. Don't fret yourself. I'm practically on my way. Banger Club. Steve? Yeah. Alone. I just saw our boy, Willard Grant. And? He threw me out. How much does he want? Brace yourself for a shock, Daddy. I think he's in love with our Vicky. No, don't talk like an idiot. It does seem impossible, doesn't it? Well, he wasn't interested in 10000 Okay, Malone. Thanks, anyway. What are you going to do? I don't know yet. I'll let you know when I make up my mind. <laughs> Yeah. I wonder if I have the right party. Are you Willard Grant? Yes. Well, this is indeed a pleasure, Mr. Grant. You don't know how I've looked forward to this. Who are you? Leslie Brett. So? You've never heard of me? I don't let it spoil your day, little man. Chicago's full of people I never heard of. I suppose that's true enough. All right, what's on your mind, Leslie? Well, I've been asked to deliver something to you. Now, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. What's the idea of the cannon? <laughs> Handsome, isn't he? I call him Marvin. Oh, you have a little... I wish you wouldn't take this personally. Believe me, I have nothing against you. Thanks. I mean that sincerely. Who sent you here anyway? Well, now, you couldn't expect me to divulge the name of my client. Well, Steve Kemper, wasn't it? Please, don't press me, Mr. Grant. Much as I'd like to oblige. Look, if you don't put that thing away, I'm going to take it and ram it down your throat. I think you mean that. I most certainly do. Well, in that case... <laughs> You'll have to forgive me, Willard, but I can't stand being touched. Your 
are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. In years gone by, immigrant ships used to dock in New York filled with the people who had heard legends in the old country about opportunity to be found in America. Well, they soon found out that in America, as everywhere else, money and the things money can buy don't grow on trees. It's our American economic system which sets our standard of living. It's important for all of us to know just how this economic system of ours works as opposed to any other. So here's a thought for today. Why not do a little reading up on the workings of our economy? Go to your library and find a good, easy text and study it. You'll find it helps you to understand the important issues of the day. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. So, like they say in Time magazine, death with a little 45 came for Willard Grant at the ripe old age of 34. But the first I knew of it was some 12 hours later. I was relaxing in the steam room at Gus's, getting a massage. When out of the fog, I heard a familiar voice, and it rubbed me the wrong way. That's a lovely back you got there, Malone, and wouldn't I love to plant a knife in it? That wouldn't be Lieutenant Brooks, would it? Want to bet? Come on, Malone, it's time to be amazing. What are you babbling about? We've got a fellow downtown who's crying for your services. Who? Steve Kemper. And what's Steve alleged to have done? Oh, that's what I love about you, Malone. You're so legal. What's he alleged to have done? There's nothing alleged about it. He killed a boy named Willard Grant. You mean Willard's dead? Well, most people generally are when they've been murdered. And you think Steve did it? Ain't I a fool? You certainly are. Come on, I want to talk to him. Oh, no, you don't. Now, look, Brooks, I'm Steve's lawyer. You can't stop me from seeing him. I can if you insist on going like that. Hmm? Put your pants on, Malone. Or don't you care how people talk? I tell you, Malone, I didn't kill Willard. You've got to believe that. Oh, I do, Steve. Lieutenant Brooks is the boy you got to convince. Go on, Steve. You want to try? I dare you. Oh, don't be a sap, Brooks. Where's his motive? Oh, you're joking, of course. Don't you think we know he sent you around to get rid of Willard and Steve made an attempt on Willard's life yesterday? Well, what time was Willard killed? At three this morning. 3 a.m.? Yeah. And that lets me out. Why, you got an alibi? Sure. I was at the club. A hundred people must have seen me. So what? So what? How can one man be in two places at the same time? Well, who said he was, Malone? I didn't say Steve actually shot Willard. You didn't? No, no. I said he was responsible. He hired someone else to do the job. How do you know that? Well, a desk clerk told us that five minutes before the shooting, an odd-looking character asked for Willard Grant's room. Did the desk clerk also tell you that this odd-looking character was hired by Steve? Well, doesn't it figure? Not the way I added, unless you take Steve for an awful jerk. No, no. I think he's a smart operator. Well, do you think a smart operator would pull so many boners? How do you suppose it would look to a jury? Well, you tell me. You're the lawyer. All right. They'd never believe that Steve had a fight with Willard, tried to gun him, buy him off, and arrange for his murder all in the space of 24 hours. It's too pat. Mm -hmm. Then you believe it's a frame. Don't you? I'll let you know after I think it over. Do that. Listen, Steve, who do you think might have framed you? Nobody. Well, how about your club manager, Curly Michaels? Are you out of your mind? Well, what happens to your club if anything happens to you? Goes to Vicky. Well, imagine, I almost forgot about her. What are you getting at? What was Vicky's reaction when she heard you had trouble with Willard? I didn't tell her about it. No, but Willard might have, and suppose he got so disgusted he packed her in. Oh, you nuts. Well, we'll soon find out. You're not to bother Vicky, understand? You underestimate my charm, Steve. Who says I'm going to bother her? Listen, Malone. Sorry, our time's up. Right, Lieutenant? Right. And let me out. It's time I was amazing. Crazy things, one of those bells that now and then rings. Yes? J Hello, Vicky. What do you want? Now, lover, that's no way to talk. Someone would think you weren't glad to see me. You'd be right. And if you're looking for my father, he isn't here. I know, I just saw him. He's in a bad spot. I hope he burns. Careful, lover, you don't know what you're saying. I hate him. And I want to be there when they strap him into the chair. I don't think they will. They wouldn't acquit him, would they, Malone? It's a cinch. I'm representing him. You're what? Uh-huh. Listen, Malone, if you get him off, I'll kill you. I mean that. I'll kill you both. Now, you listen to me, you little fool. You let me Your go. father always did everything he could for you. Who asked him to? He was always interfering. Always spying. He thought Willard was no good for you. How would he know? Willard was a married man. So what? He was the only man I ever loved. He was no good. And what makes you think I'm any better? We were two of a kind, he used to say. Right out of the same deck. 
And he was right. He'd have left you in a month. Never. No matter what he said, he and never... what did he say? It's none of your business. Maybe I can guess. Suppose you were living on borrowed time. Suppose Willard told you he thought you were more trouble than you were worth. You get out. Well, we got to think of things like that. Are you going to get out of here? For sure, lover. But you're such a fascinating creature. Don't blame me if I come back. Well, it's about time, Mr. Malone. Huh? Have you any idea of how long I've been waiting? How did you get in? I used these. Well, you're a bold one. <laughs> Aren't I? Shut the door, won't you? It'll be kind of stuffy. Hmm? Worst comes to worst, I can always let a little air in through you with this. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, that's real good. Hmm, I thought so. Now what? Now suppose you sit down over there. Over here? Mm, that's fine. You're probably wondering who I am. I got an idea. You're the odd-looking character the desk clerk saw shortly before Willard was gunned. What did you call me? Uh, that was a quote. You think you're smart, don't you? You're one of those forceful men who knows all the answers. Well, let Careful, me tell you Junior, something. you're working yourself into a snip. I've got a good mind to... No. Now, you're not going to make me angry. You thought you would, didn't you? Believe me, that was the furthest thing from my mind. Don't tell me you're scared of a little gun. Scared to death. They remind me of weddings. Very funny. Yeah, I guess not. Well, what can I do for you? Nothing, but you can do something for yourself. Such as? Such as giving up Steve Kemper as a client. Why should I do that? Because a friend of mine wants you to. You wouldn't consider telling me this friend's name. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think you wouldn't. And if I continue to represent Steve? I'll be back to see you again. Only next time, Marvin will do the talking for me. Marvin? Mm-hmm. My gun. <laughs> Say, that's real cute. You and Marvin, the Bobsy twins. You always go out together? You'll find out. Well, what do you say, Mr. Malone? What can I say? I'd be a fool to represent Steve after this. Uh, thanks for dropping around, friend. I hope you won't go to the trouble again. Do I know you? Oh, and I thought I made a definite impression. Don't you remember we met in Willard's hotel room? Oh, yes. Yes, you were on your way in. And you were on your way out. Yes, how could I forget? The name's Malone, isn't it? Uh-huh. You did invite me to drop around. Yes, and I meant it. Come in. Thanks. Hey, hey, this is quite a layout. I'd certainly hate to pick up the tab for this. Let me take your coat. Lover, you got it. Sit down. Don't mind if I do. Uh, don't, don't, don't you think it's a little crowded for the two of us on this chair? You'll find the sofa a lot more comfortable. Okay, let's try it. No, no, I mean by yourself. Oh, but I can sit by myself at home. Well, after all, Malone, you've got to consider my position. My poor husband is lying dead in the morgue. Yeah, you're really broken up about that, aren't you? What's your guess? I suppose you were upset when he said he was going to get a divorce and marry Vicky. Who told you that? Well, then he did plan to marry her. Never would have gone through with it. He was in love with her. It never would have lasted. Now, you saw to that. And what made you send Junior around to frighten me off? Who? The character who keeps company with Marvin. Are you out of your mind? No, but you must be if you thought that would do the trick. Get out. Hey, what's wrong with me anyway? No one seems to want me around. First Willard, then Vicky, now you. Are you going to get out of here? Yeah, but it's lucky I know a police lieutenant who's crazy to have me around. That reminds me. I better check on him, too. <laughs> Hello, Lieutenant. Oh, no. Look, Malone, if you don't quit hanging around police headquarters, people will talk. So they might. Look, look, Malone, will you brief me on one thing? You're a lawyer, no? I'm a lawyer, yes. Now, why can't you act like the rest of them? Get your suit pressed. Go to court. Well, my way's better. This way I don't have to drag around a briefcase. I'm telling you, Brooks, you better let Steve go. He didn't kill Willard. I didn't say he did. I said he was responsible. The odd-looking character did the actual shooting. Suppose I told you I saw him. When? He was waiting for me in my apartment. And you let him get away? No, he let me get away. Oh, why didn't you stop him? Are you serious? He could have killed me. That's no excuse. I tell you, Brooks, this is our boy. He was carrying a forty-five that he kept referring to as Marvin. Now, why didn't he shoot you? You seem disappointed. I am, I am. All right, what was he after? He wanted me to drop Steve Kemper as a client. Then he couldn't have been working for him. Eureka, you finally saw it. You gonna let Steve go? Well... Use your head, Brooks. I'd crucify you in court. I told you before, the case against Steve was too pat. Now, who would want me out of this man? Me, for one. Come on, I'm not clowning. 
Okay, okay, I'll order Steve's release. Now you're talking. Now, how about you talking? Huh? Who sent that boy up to see you? That's easy. The same party who was behind Willard's murder. Well, that tells me a lot. Who was that? His wife. Who? Willard's wife, Marsha. Oh, so you think she's the foul miscreant? I know she is. She's got the best motive of all. Willard was going to divorce her to marry Vicky. So? So this is a little girl who would never let go of a meal ticket. Did you see her suite at the Stockton? Mm-hmm. I bet it runs at least 75 bucks a day. A hundred, I'd check. Well, where do you think the money came from? She was probably bleeding Willard to death, and when she saw the ride was over... She had him killed. Right. At uh, Malone, there's just one teeny thing wrong with that theory. I feel like a cad for even mentioning it. Why? Right. Well, Marcia happens to be the daughter of Sylvester Braden. The guy who owns half the stockyards? Yeah, yeah. That girl's got more dough than Fort Knox. So she had Willard killed for his insurance, huh? I guess I was wrong. You guess you were wrong. Well, I'll say one thing for you, Malone. You may not be amusing, but you certainly are amazing. You're listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. If you bought U.S. defense bonds ten years ago, they'll mature this year. However, you don't have to redeem them and buy new bonds to continue getting your interest. Congress has just passed a law to extend the life of these same bonds you now hold for ten years more. You can, of course, cash your bonds now, but think twice before you do. There's no surer, safer investment. I think that for yourself and for America, you'll want to keep your bonds and keep on buying them, too, because defense is everybody's job now, and there's no investment that helps your country more today. And now... Back to the amazing Mr. Malone. You can talk about your luck of the Irish, but to me, it's strictly hearsay. Here I had it so neatly figured out that Marsha Grant was responsible for her husband's murder, and Lieutenant Brooks had to go and drop his bomb. After the explosion died down, I sat there for five minutes without saying a word, which must have established some sort of a record. Malone... Huh? Your mouth's open. Close it. Listen, Lieutenant, I made a mistake. No. Okay, so I was wrong, but I see it all now. Oh, no. There's one character we've been overlooking in this little drama. All right, who? Curly Michael. Curly Michael? Yeah. But he works for Steve. That doesn't preclude extracurricular activities. He could have double-crossed him. But you heard Steve say if anything happened to him, the club went to his daughter. Well, you know, Vicky, how much effort do you think it would take to swindle her? Not much. Well, there you are. Five will get you ten. Curly was the boy who sent that gunman around to scare me off. You know, I hate to say this, Malone, but you might have a point there. Well, it ain't going to do us any good here. Let's go stick it in Curly. Uh, uh, your dice, mister. Is there any house limit here? Make it light on yourself. I'll shoot five grand. You're faded. Vance, coming out. Come on, dice. Be good to pop a little four and three. You'll do it. Eight's the point. Eight's the point. Eight's the point. Uh, I got two bits. It says he's right. Oh, hiya, Counselor. Hi, Curly. We want a word with you. We? You know Lieutenant Brooks. Sure he does. Uh, take over the game, will you, Dick? I'm going to be busy for a while. Let's go to Steve's office. Well, what's on your mind, Counselor? What's always on my mind? Hey, that ain't going to get Steve out. Well, haven't you heard, Curly? Steve's been released. What? Yeah, I'm surprised he's not here yet. He left ten minutes before we did. Oh, maybe he stopped off at the apartment to see Vicky. What do you think of her, Curly? Don't ask. But I am. Well, if she was my kid, I'd break her back. She never appreciated anything Steve's done for her. You know, if anything happened to Steve, this club would go to her. I know. I guess there wouldn't be any trouble for someone to con her out of it. Yeah, huh? and it would serve her right. She's a no-good little... Go on, Curly. What were you saying? Oh, gee, Steve, am I tickled to see you. The fellas were just telling when me... When I that... came in, it looked like you were telling them. But don't stop on my account. Okay. If you weren't blind, you'd see she's a mother all over again. A dirty, rotten... Shut little... up! Uh... You got anything else to say? No. Oh, I've said my piece. And I suppose it's my turn, Steve. Suppose I told you that Curly tried to frame you for Willard's murder. What? You're crazy. You know how he feels about Vicky. If you went to the chair, he'd take this place away from her in 20 minutes. You're wrong. Show me where. Curly's been with me for 15 years. So? So, last Christmas, I offered him a 25% piece of the joint. I suppose he turned it down. He certainly did. Who needs it? Well, what do you know? I know you better do some fast talking. Looks like I was wrong again, Lieutenant. Looks like. You got any more bright ideas? Yeah. And this one's a dilly. Now, look, Malone, I've had enough. I mean it, Lieutenant. Ask yourself this. Who was the first to know of Steve's fight with Willard? The first to know I flopped when I tried to buy him off? Vicky? No. Steve. What are you talking about? I'm sorry it had to end like this, Steve. But every once in a while, one of my own clients turns out to be it. 
Believe me, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Just one of those crazy things. Say, Bing. One of those bells that now and then ring. Perry. Just one of those things. Mario. Oh, is something bothering you, Lieutenant? Yeah, yeah. Why I don't take off my shoe and club you to death with it. I said all along that Steve was the party behind Willard's murder. Why'd you let him go? Yeah. Why did I let... Who said the case was too pet? Well, it was. Sending that odd-looking character around to scare me off was a beautiful touch. It didn't seem possible that Steve was behind that. Was he? Of course, and that convinced us he was being framed. I still want to know why you bet on Steve. Well, it all came down to motivation, and Steve had the best motive of all. He was the one who really hated Willard. He thought he was bad for Vicky, so he got rid of him. Uh, oh, why didn't he kill Willard himself? He tried it once, you know how far he got. No, that hired Gunzel was a much better bet. Incidentally, did you pick him up yet? Yeah, 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 and Cicero. His name is uh, Leslie Brett. What about Marvin? Marvin. Oh, Marvin, Marvin. You mean his gun. Well, we found that on him, too. Naturally, they were going steady. You know, Malone, I can't get over it. What? Talk about switches. There were two here. One, the cop was right all along. It'll probably never happen again. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But secondly, secondly, this, this is the first case I remember where the guy who was making like a private detective wasn't bopped on the head. Say, that's right. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's hope that never happens again either. Good night, Malone. Well, Ever hear the story of the incurable gambler? This boy would take a chance on anything. He found out murder was a bad bet. I'll tell you all about him next week, so why not pick me up in my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. George Petrie was starred as John J. Malone with Larry Haynes as Lieutenant Brooks. Our program is written by Gene Wang and directed by Richard Lewis. The Amazing Mr. Malone is based on a character created by Craig Rice and produced by Bernard L. Schubert. The events and characters in this story were entirely fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is entirely coincidental. Arthur Gary speaking. The amazing Mr. Malone has come to you from New York. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. This Sunday, you're invited to meet one of your favorite families here on NBC, the Blandings. Cary Grant and Betsy Drake star every Sunday in another delightful adventure as the proud but confused owners of the famous Dream House. And on Theater Guild on the air this Sunday, you'll hear a one-hour adaptation of Ring Lardner's famous story, Elmer the Great, starring Paul Douglas. Elmer the Great is an absurd and heartwarming story with a blundering hero who has been described as solid bone above the ears, but the best pitcher in the three-eye league. It's another outstanding production by Theater Guild on the Air this Sunday with Paul Douglas in the title role. And don't forget, for mystery this Sunday, you'll hear a new private eye, Mr. Morto, who arrives with a swash of the buckle, an eye for a pretty girl, and a handy talent for solving murders. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>